And we are back to lectures, and we are now in chapter 23 in your textbook. And so 23 then, pregnancy, growth, and development. And before beginning with this lecture, you should have already, um, first of all, watched the video, Life's Greatest Miracle, not to be confused with a video with a similar title uh, that you also watched earlier, The Miracle of Life. So you should have watched Life's Greatest Miracle. This is the video, you recall, that um, kind of alternated between some really, really nice photography and some really, really good technical information uh, and, and alternated back and forth then between that material and following a couple through their pregnancy. Before beginning this lecture, you should have also watched the short cell to embryo model video and you should have also done the assigned work for exercise 52 in your lab manual. And 52 then is the fertilization and early development exercise. So if you've done all of that, if you're ready for this lecture, then you should also now have in front of you your chapter 23 lecture outline key. And remember these keys, which were made available to you, have all of the fill-ins already done on the uh, uh, on the uh, outline. So let's go ahead then and start with chapter 23. Chapter 23.1 then begins with fertilization. And off to the left here, I haven't jotted down for you the figures that we'll be looking at from time to time. And so I'll leave that to you and to begin then, just to the left uh, on your outline of where it says 23.1 fertilization, you might want to jot down figure 23.1 on page 870. And we'll get to that figure in just a moment. Fertilization then, back to your lecture outline, the union of a secondary oocyte and a sperm cell is called fertilization. And of course, you're familiar with that by now. A fertilization then also called conception. And you're also familiar with the fact that fertilization occurs in a uterine tube or fallopian tube or oviduct. So take a look now at figure 23.1. Take a minute to orient yourself. Go ahead and find labeled for you the upper part of the vagina. And notice now at this point, The diagram the figure is showing sperm cells that have been deposited in the vagina. And at this point, those sperm cells, or at least some of those sperm cells, have made their way up through the vagina and to the cervix, to the lower portion of the uterus. So what I'd like you to do now is to take a minute and see if you can find on that diagram, on figure 23.1, the point where fertilization is occurring. And it's not labeled for you, but if you follow the path of the sperm cells up through the uterus and then towards the right-hand part of the figure now, follow those sperm cells up into and through a fallopian tube, Then take a minute and find the secondary oocyte and ovulation occurring. And find that single arrow then that's labeled path of secondary oocyte. And of course, 
at the point where the sperm cells and the secondary oocyte come together, the point where the arrows come together, this would be where fertilization occurs. And you'll recall we've talked about the fact then that fertilization occurs very high up in the fallopian tube. So back to your lecture outline now, and we're talking about the transport of sex cells. And notice here we're talking specifically about the actions of prostaglandins in the semen, which is deposited, of course, in the vagina. And you'll recall from chapter 22 then that these prostaglandins are produced by these seminal vesicles. And you might want to jot that down just as a reminder. So again, this prostaglandin or these prostaglandins that are deposited as part of the semen in the vagina, these prostaglandins again were produced by the seminal vesicles. If you go down and, and let's pass 1A for just a minute. So if we go down to 1B now, notice then one thing these prostaglandins do is to stimulate the muscular contractions in the walls of the uterus and in the walls of the uterine tubes, the fallopian tubes, to aid the upward movement of sperm cells. And you're already familiar with this. You'll recall we've talked about the fact then that the, uh, the sperm cells move much more quickly because of these constrictions of the uterus and because of these constrictions then of the uterine tubes. The sperm cells move much more quickly than they would if they had to swim their way all the way up through the uterus and all the way up through the uterine tubes. And again, we're saying here that the muscular contractions that kind of push the sperm cells along result from the actions of these prostaglandins. Let's go back up now to 1A. And so notice the prostaglandins also stimulate the lashing of sperm tails. And you'll recall then that the sperm cells do have to swim their way up through the vagina to the cervix. And again, now we're finding it's the prostaglandins in the semen that stimulate this lashing of the sperm cell tails. It's the prostaglandins that stimulate the swimming of the sperm cells up through the vagina. Going down now to number two and looking at the action of female sex hormones in this transport process. Again, notice the, the major topic here that we're looking at is the transport of sex cells. And so in terms of number two then, what we're seeing is that a high concentration of estrogens in the first part of the reproductive cycle, and you may just want to jot down here as a reminder when we talk about the reproductive cycle, we're talking about the menstrual cycle. And so early in the menstrual cycle then, this high concentration of estrogens stimulates the development in the uterus of a thin watery secretion that promotes sperm transport. And you may recall seeing here in one or both of those NOVA videos, the sperm cells swimming in narrow files up through the vagina and to the cervix. And again, then, they're swimming, remember, within this thin watery secretion that we're talking about here. And again, this watery secretion then develops because of a high concentration of estrogens. So continuing, the sexual intercourse that takes place between 48 hours before ovulation and 24 hours after ovulation is most likely to result in fertilization. Next, we're talking about the process by which 
a sperm cell joins a secondary oocyte, so the fertilization process itself. And here, notice then we're talking about these enzymes produced by sperm cells. And you'll recall, again, hearing about these enzymes in the previous chapter, in chapter 22, when we were talking about the structure of a sperm cell, and we talked about the fact that the head of the sperm cell then contains these enzymes. So back to your handout then, these enzymes allow the penetration of the corona radiata and then of the zona pellucida, both of which of course are surrounding the secondary oocyte. So here off to the left, you might just want to jot down, we're now going to be looking at figure 22.3, I'm sorry, 23.3, on page 871. And let's go ahead and take a look then at that figure. Here again, take a minute at the top part of the figure and just make sure you're okay with what we're seeing here. And so notice the large secondary oocyte at the center Notice that first polar body being shown also. Take a moment now then and locate the zona pellucida. And you'll recall this is that membrane that surrounds the secondary oocyte. And then take a look moving even further out and locate the corona radiata. And recall then that the corona radiata consists of these supporting cells that surround the secondary oocyte. And now then take a look lower left hand part of the upper part of the figure and notice the sperm cells then and notice here the sperm cells are being shown as they digest their way through the corona radiata. And if you look really carefully you can see some small dots in the area of the heads of the sperm cells and each of these small dots then is meant to represent a uh, molecule of one of these digestive enzymes. So the sperm cells digest their way collectively through the corona radiata and now notice down towards the bottom part of the diagram we're looking at an enlargement of these sperm cells making their way through the corona radiata and then finally, number four on that lower part of the diagram, you can see that here, one of the sperm cells has made its way all the way to the zona pellucida. And the zona pellucida, you can see, has merged with the head of this fertilizing sperm cell. We'll stop here with this lecture and pick it up at this point with the next one.